Need to do some last-minute shopping for the holidays? Amazon can help with their two-day shipping, and you can save 15% or more at Amazon using Bitcoin or Bitcoin Cash. Just go to purse.bogosity.tv. Set your own discount. 5% gets you fastest delivery, or you can go to 30% or more if you're not in a hurry. Save money on your holiday shopping by buying with crypto. Go to purse.bogosity.tv. Welcome to the Bogosity Podcast for the week of December 2nd, 2018. The podcast that's on your mind all the time, Susu Studio. This is your host, Shane Killian. Let's exogenate the news of the bogus. And we begin with something we only cover in extreme circumstances, a cops behaving badly story, this time when cops shot and killed a security guard who was holding a potential mass shooter at gunpoint. Just so everyone knows, when I research a story for this podcast, I make sure it's a report from several news outlets to try and weed out any fake news. I generally pick one of the stories to include in the show notes. Sometimes I'll pick two or three, just trying to get the most comprehensive coverage I can find. In this case, just to stave off everyone screaming fake news about this horrendous shooting, I'm giving the link to this story on Snopes.com. So hopefully that'll make them shut up and listen, because this one's important. An armed suspect entered a bar in a Chicago suburb around 4 a.m. and opened fire, injuring several customers. Jamel Robertson was an armed security guard who drew his weapon on the shooter, stopping the shooting, and holding the shooter while waiting for police to arrive. And when police showed up, they shot and killed him. According to Illinois State Police, quote, Upon his arrival, a Midlothian police officer encountered a subject in plain black clothing with no marks readily identifying him as a security guard, armed with a gun in the West parking lot. According to witness statements, the Midlothian officer gave the armed subject multiple verbal commands to drop the gun and get on the ground before ultimately discharging his weapon and striking the subject. The problem is no one can find these witness statements. The witnesses everyone else has talked to has said that this is not how it happened. Witnesses say he was wearing a hat with the word security on it, and that he was complying with the commands of one officer when a second officer shot him. For one example, Jakia Wood said that Robertson was complying with commands to release the subject, but, quote, Before he could get up off him, the officer comes flying out this store gun up. He says, get on the ground, and before he says ground, he fires the first shot. Everybody is screaming and hollering. Even the officers were screaming and hollering, he's one of us, he's one of us, he's a security guard, he works here. Other witnesses such as Adam Harris back up her version of events. There are two big issues here. One is that Robertson was black, which is fueling more outrage about the disproportionate rate that blacks are killed by police in this country. Second, is that this is an example of what gun control nut bars say doesn't happen. A good guy with a gun stopping a bad guy. And yet, the psychopaths at Everytown said that this is a reason why you should not have armed people stopping shooters. Because trigger-happy psychopathic cowboy policemen might shoot them down for no reason. Somehow, this is a problem with racism and the Second Amendment, not a problem with police and their complete lack of accountability. Say, if you're tired of the promos in this podcast, well, the patrons got it early and with no ads or promos. Just go to patreon.bogosity.tv and donate at any level. Do you have children or nieces or nephews? Are you homeschooling or just want to counter some of the socialist indoctrination most children get in school? If so, go to bogosity.tv slash Tuttle Twins and you'll be taken to a website where you can get some great books for elementary age children. The Tuttle Twins books are books about liberty and free market economics that include children's versions of Bastiat's The Law, Leonard Reed's I Pencil, and Hayek's The Road to Serfdom, as well as books about the Federal Reserve and how regulations protect business cronies. They'll learn about the harm caused by eminent domain, or regulations passed in the name of safety, and fundamental concepts of liberty. And as you can see from the sample pages on the website, they're all easy to read and nicely illustrated. They're just $9.99 a piece, or get a special discount as well as free bonuses when you purchase all five. You can even buy in bulk to donate to schools and local libraries. So get the Tuttle Twins books at bogosity.tv slash Tuttle Twins. 
Things are just getting worse in Venezuela as democratic socialism's true colors come out more and more. The Venezuelan government is rolling out a new Chinese-made ID card to track, reward, and even punish citizens. The cards connect to vast databases, allowing the government to monitor everything from their personal finances to medical history and even voting activity. Ten years ago, Anthony de Keen, technical advisor to the Venezuelan delegation, raised the privacy concerns with these cards with officials. In response, he was detained, beaten, and extorted by several intelligence agents who knocked out his teeth with a handgun while accusing him of treason and asked why he was betraying the revolution. Daikin fled the country with his wife and children in fear for his life. He now works as an information security consultant in the U.S. Now, the cards are being implemented to bolster national security. This comes during a time when, as we've covered, Venezuelans are dealing not only with the tyrannical government, but inflation the World Bank says is set to reach 1 million percent by the end of the year. Many Venezuelans are turning to cryptocurrencies such as Dash, which is accepted at more than 2,200 merchants in Venezuela, including Walmart and Subway. Now Maduro is saying the card is required to obtain access to medicine, pensions, food baskets, and fuel. This is the problem with socialism. Not only does it ruin your economy, when they do give you those handouts, they aren't free. They come at the cost of your basic liberty. If you're on the Wi-Fi in a coffee shop or hotel, anyone on that network can get your traffic. Do you really trust all of those strangers? For that matter, do you really trust your ISP? A VPN can protect you from prying eyes, disguise your location, and even foil government censors. It's essential in this day and age, so go to vpn.pogosity.tv and you'll be taken to BoxPN. Starting at just $2.99 a month, you can get unlimited high-speed connections to VPN servers all over the world, and they don't log connections, so your privacy is assured. Traveling abroad, just VPN home, and don't worry about what those other governments are doing. Back at home, stop your ISP from traffic shaping and messing with the quality internet access you're paying good money for. You can connect from multiple machines at once, including your smartphone or tablet, and it supports all the secure standards, including OpenVPN and SSTP. Bypass sensors and surveillance with your own secure VPN connection. Go to vpn.pogosity.tv. Here's the sort of thing we've seen in the U.S. twice before, under Trump and Obama, and now it's come out the same thing has happened in Japan. The Japanese minister in charge of cybersecurity, as it turns out, has never actually used a computer before. In fact, he was completely confused by a simple USB drive. He was unable to comprehend the question when news outlets asked whether USB drives were in use at Japanese nuclear facilities. Amazingly, he said they needed to ask an expert. They thought they were! It would be one thing if this were some developing country, but Japan is one of the most technological societies in the world. It's this sort of thing that caused Tom Lehrer to stop doing political satire. I mean, who can compete these days with the real thing? So whenever someone says we need government to do this or that because we need to make sure it's done by experts who know what they're doing, here's yet another little gem to lay on them. We live in a world where light bulbs connect to the internet, and recent attacks on them prove that your online security is under threat like never before. Not only your websites, but the internet-enabled devices you buy. And the biggest problem is weak passwords. That's why you need LastPass. LastPass allows you to randomly generate strong, unique passwords on the web and on your internet-enabled devices, all protected by one master password. LastPass sets up in minutes and gives you secure automatic logins throughout the web, synchronizing across all your browsers, all your computers, and even your mobile devices, at home, at work, or on the road. It even securely stores sensitive form data, including credit card numbers, backup sensitive documents, software licenses, Wi-Fi logins, and more. And with LastPass Premium, you can get these benefits on other applications, manage passwords for your entire family, and also get priority customer support. Sign up at password.bogosity.tv for a free month of LastPass Premium. Log in securely everywhere using the last password you'll ever have to remember. 
Go to password.bogosity.tv and get LastPass now. And now it's time to zombify this week's biggest bug on emitter. And this week it goes to Bill Maher for comments he made in the wake of comic legend Stan Lee's death. So let's start with the comments Maher made about the men who created Spider-Man, The Incredible Hulk, X-Men, Iron Man, The Fantastic Four, Daredevil, Doctor Strange, and so many others. Quote, But the assumption everyone had back then, both the adults and the kids, was that comics were for kids, and when you grew up you moved on to big boy books without the pictures. Actually, virtually no one had that assumption at the time. It was part of the pop culture. Just as Bugs Bunny and the Three Stooges weren't considered children's media at the time. Same with comic books. That only came later because of the same kind of elite snobbery that oozes from every syllable of Mars Post. Besides, ever been to an art museum? That's pretty much all pictures. Is he saying Van Gogh and Vermeer are unsophisticated? How can art and literature both be great, but all of a sudden it must be plebeian when you combine them together? Quote, but then 20 years or so ago, something happened. Adults decided they didn't have to give up kid stuff, and so they pretended comic books were actually sophisticated literature. I want someone to read Watchmen, or V for Vendetta, or Sandman, or Rising Stars, and tell me that this is kid stuff and not sophisticated literature. Or as lecturer, critic, and historian Peter Sanderson wrote, the Marvel of the 1960s was, in its own way, the counterpart of the French New Wave. Marvel was pioneering new methods of comic storytelling and characterization, addressing more serious themes, and in the process, keeping and attracting readers in their teens and beyond. Moreover, among this new generation of readers were people who wanted to write or draw comics themselves within the new style that Marvel had pioneered and pushed the creative envelope still further. By the way, this is exactly the same kind of criticism contemporary elites levied against Shakespeare and Mozart and Dickens. And none of them were setting out to make this highbrow literature. They set out to create works that were enjoyable by the masses. And in terms of the quality of the literature and the timeless sophistication of cultural and social issues, I'll put the Stan Lee Marvel era over anything Mars ever done. Besides, by Mars' own admission, he's never read comics even as a kid, so how would he know? And of course, you know he had to bring Orange Man into it. Quote, I don't think it's a huge stretch to suggest that Donald Trump could only get elected in a country that thinks comic books are important. Yeah, somehow I don't think it was comic book fans who put his election over the top. The ironic thing is, he calls his blog post adulting. But I don't see anything adult about these comments, which basically amount to hateful schoolyard taunting. After getting a well-deserved reaming online, he stood by his comments in an interview with Larry King. Quote, What I was saying is, a culture that thinks that comic books and comic book movies are profound meditations on the human condition is a dumb fucking culture, and for people to get mad at that just proves my point. No, it doesn't, Mar. And gotta love him playing the You got mad at me, that means I'm right card. Maybe they didn't like the fact that you were trashing the life's work of a man who stood up against hatred and bigotry and prejudice and created charitable foundations dedicated to literacy, education, and the arts. What's Mar done? And what about the sheer tastelessness of doing this immediately after the man died? This seems like a grab for attention, nothing more. Granted, it worked, but I think the real thing is that, in the long run, Mars actually jealous, because in all probability, when his time comes, his obituary would simply be half-rate comedian dies and be a big meh. Either way, it just has to make Bill Maher this week's biggest bogan emitter. If you're going to shop online, use our special links to shop at Amazon. Clear your cookies and go to amazon.bogosity.tv, and you won't pay a penny more for your purchase. If you haven't used the mobile app in the last 12 months, 
or even at all, go to get5.bogosity.tv on your phone or tablet and get $5 off your order of $10 or more. Go to prime.bogosity.tv for a free 30-day trial of Amazon Prime and enjoy thousands of movies and TV episodes, borrow Kindle books, and get unlimited two-day shipping for free. And speaking of Kindle, go to kindle.bogosity.tv for a 30-day free trial to Kindle Unlimited, read over 1 million books, and listen to thousands of audiobooks on any device. You can go to music.bogosity.tv and get a free 30-day trial of Amazon Music Unlimited with access to Amazon's entire library of 10 million songs, ad-free and with unlimited skips, and even download to listen offline. All great ways to help this podcast simply by shopping at Amazon. And now let's wave a Geiger counter over this week's Idiot Extraordinary! And just when you think the gun control nut bars can't get any stupider, Eric Salwell steps forward to prove you wrong. Of course, he is a California Democrat, so it's probably to be expected. As anyone with even a cursory knowledge of history knows, the Founders created the Second Amendment in large part so that the people could overthrow the U.S. government if it got too tyrannical. Salwell, who's considering running for president in 2020, said that if this actually happened, they would, get this, nuke them. Okay, aside from the first 150 problems with this that you and I just thought of the instant he said it, but apparently would never occur to a sociopathic narcissist like Solwell, the big problem is that gun owners and Second Amendment activists don't all live in the same area where you can get them all with one nuke. Second, anyone who can even think it would be feasible to nuke our own population shouldn't be put in charge of a can of sardines, let alone the free world. After the first nuke fell, all it would do is galvanize the rest of the population against the government. The current history of U.S. intervention in the Middle East proves that this sort of attack does not lead to compliance, but more and more radicalized opposition. Also, they'd be doing nothing more than destroying their own revenue stream, past and future. There'd be no productivity, no tax base on any of that land until the radiation went away. He said the need to own a firearm to protect against the government is, quote, ludicrous. Says the man who just talked about nuking Americans who disagree with him. If nothing else, all he's doing is confirming the effectiveness of an armed populace. Because if they're that much of a threat, it has to be effective. So all of that makes Eric Salwell this week's Idiot Extraordinary. up this i'm just sitting here on the group w bench edition of the bogosity podcast come join the discussion at discord.bogosity.tv and feel free to send a question statement news article or rant in text or audio to podcast at bogosity.tv this podcast depends on you to keep going so please donate to shane dk on paypal or if you want to use crypto you can donate at altcoins.bogosity.tv you can also support Shane DK on Patreon to get the podcast and my YouTube videos early and ad-free. Thank you for listening. Until next time, here's a quote from Margaret Chase Smith. When people keep telling you that you can't do a thing, you kind of like to try it. The Bogosity Podcast is licensed under Creative Commons Attribution on Commercial No Derivatives 4.0 International License. Bogosity. Christmas time is coming, and the most classic of Christmas stories is A Christmas Carol. But how much do you know about the original Charles Dickens novella? Have you dismissed it as a children's book with one-dimensional characters amounting to nothing but platitudes and cliches? Maybe your appreciation of the book was even muted by those dry, boring, annotated books they made you read in school. My book, the sarcastically annotated A Christmas Carol by Charles Dickens, uses both facts and humor to present the book in a way you probably haven't seen it before. Giving praise when deserved and beratement when warranted, this book is put in the perspective of its time and shows a dimensional, multi-layered Ebenezer Scrooge from start to finish. Skepticism, history, and even economics are employed to show the book in relation to today in an easily accessible format. Appreciate the Christmas of your youth all over again, 
Get the sarcastically annotated A Christmas Carol by Charles Dickens, available at Amazon and on PDF as well.